All right, by God's uh, special grace and mercy, which we enjoy on a daily basis. Uh, this week, we want to uh, go deep or search the scripture verses that we quoted uh, during our membership uh, covenant which is necessary and uh, sometimes we may overlook it or not go especially to do the reference. We may see one passage, but uh, I felt that uh, today by God's grace, as we do a uh, study, we can review those uh, passages because they are very relevant. And the passages refer to the um, proclamation of the membership covenant in which we stated that I, each member, as a member of First Century Gospel Church, uh, do join in the fellowship of the gospel of the grace of God, and that I covenant with God, not uh, with not me, just uh, with God first, uh, with you, my most gracious, merciful, almighty, and the Holy Father in the presence of my brothers and sisters in Christ that I will love other members, pray for other members, and uh, seek to help others grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, the references that you know, capture what we've just said here uh, in First Timothy chapter two verses one to four, so that we can uh, understand fully what uh, the passages mean. That is why we haven't. So uh, there are many passages to review, but uh, they will help us along the line in understanding why we are making a covenant. The covenant doesn't mean that oh, it's only only when uh, a particular no, it's a covenant that means it's binding upon us, each of us, all of us, and uh, as members of the church. So what does the reference have? Uh, the reference is First Timothy chapter two, verses one to four, and this is what it says. And here, uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul is writing to the young pastor Timothy, and this is what he encouraged him to do. He says, I exhort therefore that First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Two, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Three, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, and verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come into or uh, unto uh, the knowledge of the truth. So, amen. This is to help us understand that when we are making a covenant, it is not just to say, oh, I'm a covenant, to, and again, we are talking about prayers. We are talking about doing something for other people, and that involves prayers because verse one commands us it's a command from god it's not uh, a pastor it's a, it's a commandment this is what god is saying to each of us that we should all and he says i therefore exhort that all for all he didn't say some not for only those we like those those we interact with it's only for it's for everyone he says first of all let's uh, make supplications supplications are prayers that you are offering on behalf of other people. And that, oh, we need the Lord. Please uh, bless this person, bless them, bless here, here and there. And then prayers. We can see that they are all prayers, but prayers have different names, you know. So um, if supplication, it means we want this thing, we need a request, we need something done, and then we are praying, and then we are also interceding. We, you know, somebody has a problem. Oh, let's pray for them that they will have a victory. Somebody's got going through issues. Let us pray for them. 
let us pray on behalf of everyone. And then we also to be giving thanks. People think that Thanksgiving is only in November uh, that they're supposed to be doing. So you have to thank them. Thanksgiving is for every day. And the verse uh, one is telling us that, again, when the scriptures is writing or saying something, it normally will say men. But men doesn't mean uh, that it's only for men. Of course, in those days, they were always writing to the men, a few to the women, all right? But then when they are writing uh, to the church, they always address the men because they wanted the men to be the, uh, the people to carry the message to their wives and, uh, and also others and the children and all. So it is always to the men, but men here means all men and women and children. So that is what we are supposed to do. If you are making a covenant, and then he is also talking about kings. We may not have kings here, but we have presidents and prime ministers and vice presidents and uh, premier. All those are those we need to pray for. Pray for everyone. That's showing love. That is because we are making a covenant of love with other people. And this must be done all the time. Whether we like it or don't, this is God's commandment. And uh, we do it also so that when we are praying for them, whatever plans they have in their head, God will you know, adjust it to help us. Because we know the world is filled with evil people, bad people. But we have to pray for them. Lord, change them. Lord, turn them around. And they may be telling us lies. But we have to pray for them, Lord. Look in their eyes, help them. So that is uh, one of the verses that we are, there's so much, but I don't want to spend much time on this particular one. But God is saying that uh, we have to do it so that we can live a peaceful life, a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. It means once we do this, and it will help us. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. And who, why is that? Because God wants all people. He wants us to preach to all people through our prayers. Who have all men, when he says men again, men and women, to be saved and to come to the knowledge of God's truth. So that is the first uh, verse. Uh, verses that we've read or verse part of the uh, quotation. And then we go to uh, something here which is also uh, relevant. James chapter 5, verse 15. And this is also showing love to others. Because remember, we are doing covenant. So this verse uh, may be different from what we've read, but it's also similar. It says, James 5, 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another mm -hmm. that ye may be healed. And the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man and woman has developed much. So again, here, I mean, God is telling us that by dealing with our brothers and sisters and moms and fathers and children and brothers, all of those, and we have to deal with them in a way that we are humble. If somebody has done us something, Say, oh, I'm sorry. Or if we've done something to someone, say, oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. This is what it means, that we should be able to deal with other people. There shouldn't be any hatred in us. So that's where confess your fault one to another and pray for one another. So the question is, are we praying for one another? This is why we have the covenant. So we want to be praying for one another. And I pray that you guys should pray for me as I pray for you and pray for others. So please, this is a commandment. And that also provides, a, uh, there's a reward. God always gives reward for everything that we do. He says when we do that, we are going to be healed. We are going to be, uh, we are going to be able to overcome any challenges that may be out there. And he also says the effectual servant prayer of a righteous man and woman avail it much. So when we are serious, when we are genuine, when we are 
really truthful in our confessing to others. Uh, things will go our way. Uh, my screen just went blank. Okay, it came back. And uh, so that is God's commandment. And so we are praying that we will have that as uh, something to always remember. And then the third verse, uh, third uh, scripture verse, the second Peter chapter three, verse 18. And here he is uh, encouraging us all that second Peter chapter three, verse 18, that grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him, the glory both now and forever. When we are showing love, extra love, genuine love to other people, that is also going to allow God to allow the other things that we need to also work out for our good because God always uh, blesses those who go the extra mile in trying to show love with other uh, brothers and sisters, even to our enemies, because we already commanded that even our enemies, we should deal with them uh, properly. So, and it is a commandment. So we pray that we will see that. And then the second part of the membership covenant talks about, I will put away from me all bitterness, wrath, anger, evil speaking, and I will be kind to others tender-hearted, forgiving others, even as you, Holy Father, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. Amen. So here we have the instruction which is also given by uh, in the scriptures by the apostle Paul again, uh, writing to the church at Colossae. And what did he write to them? But he's telling them that as Christians, as brothers and sisters, let us put on, therefore, as the elect of God. So he is considering us that we've been given a higher calling. We've been given a, um, a membership into God's uh, children, to become God's children. He's telling us that we should put on because we are elect. We have been called. We've been granted. We've been grafted in into the membership of becoming children as the elect God, holy and beloved bowels, bowels of mercy, which means our heart, our bowels, our every part of us from the inside must be filled with holiness first. Also, it has to be filled with love. It has to be filled with mercy. It has to be filled with kindness. And we have to do it in humility, which means our mind, everything about us has to be uh, filled with humility in our mind, and then meekness, and long-suffering. So, uh, it is, we all know how to be kind and do all of those uh, requirements from God. But sometimes uh, we can't take it any longer. We feel, oh, I've done, you know, but God says that is why He adds long suffering. Patience is fine, but then when you run out of patience, you have to go the extra mile. That is long suffering. It means that it is not just once, it continues in spite of whatever pressure uh, we get. We need to continue to have this. And uh, it's an attitude that can only be accomplished through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he said in us verse 13 of second of Colossians 3, uh, 13 now says, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And if any man or woman, as it always says man here, but man or woman have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So we have the tendency of thinking, of forgetting, let me say, of forgetting that we have been forgiven. God has already forgiven us because of Christ. And so if Christ has done the work of allowing us to be forgiven, and we cannot forgive our brother, then 
what are we doing? Of course, the world doesn't want that. The world likes revenge. The world likes uh, to pay back. The world likes to uh, do all those things. When somebody offends us, what do you want to do? Sue them. Take them to court. No. God says, don't do that. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have any issues with another person, you know, continue to forgive. Because he says, God forgave you. So you have to do the same. It's God's commandment. It's not mine. Verse 14 of Colossians 3 says, and above all this, put on charity, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. So he is telling us that as Christians, if we want to be perfect, remember the Lord Jesus Christ was always telling the people who were following him, he says, if you want to be perfect, somebody will say, oh, uh, Lord, what, what can I do? He said, do this. And he said, oh, I've done all that. I'm, I'm going to say, no. Okay, if you want to be really, really perfect, you know what you should do? Sell everything that you have and give it to the poor. Said, mm, where? So this is what is being said here. And above all these things, you know, put on charity, put on love, that extra love, which is the bond, which is the supreme, it's, it's like gold, it's the golden standard of perfectness. So uh, that is his requirement. Verse 16. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. We, when we are obeying God's commandment and following his instructions, he gives us the peace. And that's why when we say the peace of God, when we have the peace of God, when we have the love of God, when we have the Holy Spirit, you know, allowing us to implement these things as we are talking about, then we have the necessary blessings. It's going to be in our hearts. It has to be in our hearts because Christ has called us into one body with him, to become one with him. And that we do so because we are grateful. We have to be grateful to God. Not to be saying, that, oh, no, this person. We have to be thankful to God. That's why we have the thankful at, at the beginning. We have to give thanks all the time. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Well, richly is a word which, I don't know, uh, he is saying, let the word of God overflow be abundant, be, you know, overcome you, fill you completely from head to toe, fill every part of you. That's what he's saying. Let the word of God, the word of Christ, and the word of Christ is always that we should love one another. And we, if we have that understanding and we are always remembering that, then it is going to be very, very helpful for us. And what else would he do? And then he says, we are doing it in wisdom. We are doing it with the wisdom from the Holy Spirit. And then it will also allow us to teach and admonish one another, our brothers, our sisters, our family, our fathers and mothers. And we'll be able to do so using God's word, the Psalms and hymns. And we should remember that when this was written, people didn't have uh, the whole scriptures. But now we have them. We have the old, we have the new. And so those people at that time, they only have portions of uh, the scriptures. We have everything. And so let us use the Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. And when we are singing, sometimes we always feel that, oh, we are singing because of this person or that person. We are singing to God. So may the Lord help us so that I will have that joyful spirit in our hearts. All because it's a covenant that we don't want to have any bitterness. Remember, second part of the uh, covenant says, I will put away from me 
any or all bitterness, wrath, anger, and evil speaking. And I'll be kind to others, tender hearted. That is what you are reading. And verse 17. And whatsoever ye do, or we do, in what? Indeed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. That means the Lord Jesus Christ. So if from what we are being taught, we want to accomplish everything in Christ, then we have to do everything. Whether we are thinking about it, whether we are actually doing it, whether we are, you know, everything has to be according to Christ in the name. So, for example, when people say things and they are not happy about what they are doing and they are saying it uh, to somebody or people are using bad names or they curse, is it to God? No. If we are cursing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a, a blasphemy. That's a terrible thing. So one has to be careful that what comes out of our mouth, what comes out of our actions, what we do, they all have to be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what if, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we shouldn't think about anybody with a, any malice, any anger, any of those things. And then at the same time, we have to be, we can see that Thanksgiving is all part of what we are doing, every part of this verse. We are doing it in the name of the Father, through Christ, because Christ gave us the uh, instructions. So, amen to that. And then we go to the next, uh, the third uh, moment, uh, membership covenant. I will not forsake the assembling of myself with others for worship and service, but will honor your holy scriptures and will seek to follow those who have the spiritual rule over me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17 and uh, 25. So this is all about God, honoring God. And when we honor God, it means we are following his principles and we want to do everything to honor him and ensure that if God has called us to obeying him, then we have to do so everything. So when we are obeying God, we're following everything that he says. Uh, Hebrews 10, 17 says, those who do all the things that God says, you know, then he says, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. God is not going to remember our sins. But when we refuse to have that love, then God is also going to remember our sins and all those things that we have done. So that is an encouraging part. Then we go to verse 25, which says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So, I mean, God is reminding us that we have to continue to attend church services. Of course, this time we are not able to meet in person for one reason or the other, which we all know. And, but then, if we can do it online, we should, you know, do that. So, and it gives us more opportunity to say that, well, uh, even though I was supposed to meet in person, this is an option that is available that we can use. So uh, it should be convenient for all. all. And uh, attending doesn't mean that, well, first we'll prefer that, you know, we all show our faces if it is possible. But if we don't, at the same time, uh, we'll at least accept the fact that, you know, we are attending, we are present, we are being uh, available for the service which uh, is being offered. So God says, don't forsake, don't prevent, don't, uh, you know, don't be absent. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. So which means it is, uh, some people have the habit, they say, well, 
I'm a church goer. I go to church, but they don't show up. So let us please uh, see what God is saying, but exalting one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. What day is approaching? The day of the Antichrist is approaching. Why the Antichrist is already here? Well, at a time he is going to be revealed, and we need to be very uh, ready. We need to be um, studying our scriptures, praying, fellowshipping, you know, encouraging one another. This is what is ex exhorting one another. We have to exhort, we have to encourage. So let us thank God, let us pray, let us uh, remember one another in prayer so that things will go well. And uh, when we do that, God will also provide us uh, the means and reward us in what uh, we need. And then we go to number three, uh, the fourth, we just read in number three, the fourth um, covenant. I will be a good steward of all that you, Heavenly Father, have given me. I will be just in my dealings and will give as you, gracious Father, have prospered me, not grudgingly or of necessity. For you, Heavenly Father, or Merciful Father, have promised to bless me as a cheerful giver. So here we have uh, responsibilities of everyone as a, a Christian, as a church uh, member, uh, that God wants us to follow his instructions. And the instruction has to do with uh, tithing offerings uh, to the church. And here, let's read what he says, and then we'll see. He says, uh, Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 to 11, says, again, this is God's word. He says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And God replied, in tithes and offerings. Nine, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Ten, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Eleven, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. And here God is talking first to the Israelites during that time, because it was written to uh, the Israelites in those days when uh, Prophet Malachi was uh, admonishing them. And uh, there was a conversation uh, in which, you know, we can see that this, we are starting from verse 8, but the conversation was from the prophet with the Israelites. And so in verse 8, the prophet was asking them from God's mouth, Will a man rob me? Again, when he says man, he's talking about man and woman. So, will a man or woman rob me? Yes, ye have robbed me, which is God is talking. They have robbed God. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? You know, and God replies, in tithes and offerings. And what are tithes? What are offerings? Tithes, tithes or tithes are the, um, in the Old Testament, it was always the 10% of the income of what uh, you know people received and then they were supposed to set 10% aside and then provide it to the church, provide it to the prophet, provide it to the house of God uh, which they had to do at that time and also in addition to the 10% they were supposed to offer something else you know uh, of course uh, of course, you one gives Oh, this is the percentage that I receive, the 10% of my salary, and I'm giving that to the church, to God. When you give it to the church, it's not to the uh, pastor, it's always to the church, to, to God, because 
we always say, oh, yeah, it's to the pastor. What is the pastor going to do uh, with it? It is God's requirement. And so when he says offering, the offerings are also something else. Okay, well, I, I have paid my offering to God, uh, paid my tithe to God. This is the offering that I'm also offering. So a little bit of here, a little bit there, so just, you know, as part of it. So it is a requirement from God that God says that every member should provide and it is accountable to God and not uh, to uh, the pastor. And of course, uh, unfortunately, verse 9 is saying that, well, he was telling them, the Israelites at that time, because of what they had done, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed God, even this whole nation. So you can see that he was talking about the Israelites all the time, but we should know that everything that he was speaking to them applies to us, applies, applies to all Christians around the world uh, who attend church services. And so whether they are doing it online or in person, that is also applicable. But here, the encouragement from verse 10 is always wonderful when God is speaking. He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. So he's not talking about meat, meat, but he's talking about things have to be done. And so when God is requesting that the nation, the people, the Christians should bring in their offerings, it will allow things to be done in the house of God. So he's talking about the church, talking about the temple, talking about the sanctuary, and all of this is all from God. Of course, when it's being given to the priest, the high priest, or to the pastors, to the ministers, it means that we are doing it to God. And when we do it to God, God is also going to give us a promise, a, a reward. The promise is there and then reward. When you do it, this is what you get. And he says, prove me now. Here we prove me now. That's what he's saying. Say the Lord of hosts. And if I will not open you the windows of heaven. And what will happen? God it says, if we obey his commandment, he is going to open heaven and open all the blessings from heaven and pour out, pour, pour out from heaven a blessing upon us that there shall not be room enough to receive, which means that somebody, for, for let's use rain, you know, uh, rain, somebody, a farmer, needs blessings on his farm or her farm and he has been doing his offerings and tithing and then he's praying for rain lord i need rain on my crop i need i need uh, rain to be able to do god is saying that i'm going to pour more rain you know i'm using the example of rain you're going to pour rain on your farm so that there will be so much rain that all of those crops that have needed water for the world are going to be able to have it. And we always know that even in the yard, when it rains, in a few days, we see uh, the, rain, uh, the, the, the grass just growing, everything blossoms. So that is another part of uh, explanation to let us know that when we obey this commandment, we are going to receive the blessings from God. And uh, not only that, Verse 11, the most important part. He says, while we are going to be able to receive that blessing, he's also going to do verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer of, for your sakes. So God is in control. He is in charge. And he is telling us that those who obey him, he is going to do his part. And what part is he going to do? Because we know we are always facing challenges. We are facing the enemy. We are facing the devil. We are facing the devil is always creating problems and issues and all of this. So God is saying when we have obeyed him, what is he going to do? He's going to rebuke the devourer or the evil, the problem. He's going to put a stop. No, you can't come. These people are covered. These people are under my protection. That is what he's saying. And I will rebuke him the river for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Not only the ground, it could be anything. It's going to ensure that because 
we have done our responsibilities, it's going to ensure that we also have all of the necessary blessings and protections. You know, it's going to seal off all the places so that no harm, you know, can reach us. I wish I could quote other passages, but it's, uh, you know, like um, Psalm 23, but we are going to be up. But let's just focus on this. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. What is he saying here? Sometimes you have uh, all of the, uh, you know, the farmers, their crop. All of a sudden, what happens? There's drought. Things happen and, oh, they lose all their crop. No. God is saying he's not going to allow that to happen. He's going to ensure that everything will blossom at the right time. And so in our case, in our time, we can convert it to whatever we are also dealing with in our life, with the different work we do. That's what God says. And before the time, and say the Lord of hosts. So it is a big promise from God. And let's try to uh, finish. Uh, we are on paragraph five of the membership covenant. And what does that mean? What does that say? And that is telling us that I will seek to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit in my daily Christian work with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And what else? It says, and as I have the opportunity, I will do good to all men and women, especially those who are of the household of faith. And I will strive to carry out my Lord Jesus Christ's great commission to spread the gospel throughout the whole world. And where do we find that? We know the great commission is already given to us. And uh, God wants us to always carry the message. And uh, we don't have to know all of the scriptures. We can start from scratch. Or we can just do the basics and say that this is what the word of God says. And so we can do it. And let's do Matthew 28, where the great commission begins. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He says, teaching them. My screen is always going in and out, sorry. Uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So this is a great a charge to all Christians that we should go out, we should spread the gospel, we should uh, share it. We may not know how to preach. We don't have to know how to. We can just tell them, you know, God loves you. God wants to save you. So, and God wants you to hear his word. And invite the person to church. Invite the person to hear uh, the message. And that is one way. Another way is doing it and also calling somebody, okay, or oh, calling the preacher, calling the minister, okay, can you help me to speak to this person? You know, and that is one part, the other part. So then teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. God has commanded us so many things, but there are basic things that we can do. When we are obeying that, Christ says he will be with us always, all the time, even to the end of the world. So he is not going to leave us lonely or to cause us to uh, have issues and problems. And when we have uh, Christ on our side, it's also going to allow us to enjoy all the power from him, which is the Holy Spirit guidance. In Galatians 5, 22 and 20, 25, he tells us what he's going to do for us. Then he says, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, he's going to allow us to produce, to be able to um, activate the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is where the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, verse 23, meekness, 
temperance. Against such, there is no law. 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. And 25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Amen. So once we have uh, agreed to allow the Holy Spirit to rule us, to put on Christ, then we'll be able to produce it's not easy, but God will allow us to do it, to be filled with all the, uh, you know, the parts of the spirit, the power of the spirit, because love and joy and peace and long suffering. These are not simple. It's not easy to love somebody to uh, to express the gentleness when somebody is doing the wrong thing to you. But God says we should, because once we do that, we have obeyed and fulfilled all the righteousness that is required. And verse 24 says, and they that are Christ or Christians, and it means every Christian is supposed to have crucified the flesh with their affections and laws. All of these three are from where? The devil. The devil wants us to be uh, manipulated, to be controlled by worldliness, by uh, things that are not right and loss. So when these are plaguing us, people who, you know, some people, let's just, who are involved in all these uh, movies, some of them are even entertainment. They are fleshy. Everything about worldliness, just to expose themselves, expose themselves in one way or the other. Boyfriend, girlfriend, all of these things, in which create the problem of flesh, worldliness, affections, you know, or oh, I like and love and all these things. And, and in, the, in the schools, you have uh, young you know, and the old, boyfriend, girlfriend, and uh, visiting and then going into each other's homes, sleeping in each other's homes, all these things. And, and then the loss, because it's all not from Christ. But Christ is saying that once you have put on Christ, and you are going to be able to crucify. Crucify means dead. But if we cannot crucify these things, then where are we? So then the question here, if we live in the Spirit, if we say we are living in accordance with the Holy Spirit, then we have to walk in the Spirit. How do we, I think they say, uh, uh, talk the talk or do the work, whatever it's called. You know, we have to do a lot and may God uh, help us. And then, uh, so let's finish it off by reading John, the Gospel of John from the Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say? John 13, 14 and 15, he says, if I, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, it says, if I, then your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also, ye also, ought to wash one another's feet. 15, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Question. Can we wash the other person's feet? Not only the other person, but the person who has harmed you, the person who has done something wrong to you. Can you do that? And that is a problem with us. We say we are Christians, all right? But if we look at the first uh, paragraph, we read, it has to do with love, that we have to uh, pray for one another, help one another, do all those things. And when, you have, when you're able to do number one, then the others will be easy. Because you'll be able to say, oh, Lord, the Lord, master, wash his disciples' feet. Then I should be able to do the same thing. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, and may God help us so that we can follow the example of Christ, because he really wants us to obey him. And if we obey him, then we are going to be rewarded with all the necessary blessings uh, that we have read.
So we thank God for allowing us to review the scriptural verses in um, the membership covenant, which we normally uh, proclaim in the services. So uh, as we have, if we don't have a copy, uh, please, you know, uh, let me know and I will send a copy uh, to you so that you can review the verses your own and have it as a reference at any time. But it's a guide. It's, a, it's really something that we must uh, always ask God to help us. Lord, I want to obey you. Help me to obey you. I want to follow. I want to be a, 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 a member, a real member in your kingdom. And the covenant that I am proclaiming here has to be also uh, reviewed once a while because sometimes we all forget. And so it's always helpful that we review it. Again, we thank God for what he has brought to our attention and we will kneel in prayer. Let us kneel 